Yo, what is up, y'all? My name is Devin, and today I'm gonna be breaking down key signs of overtraining, what to look for, how to prevent it, and how to fix it if you do end up digging yourself into a fatigue ditch. I've seen several of my trans mask homies literally give themselves severe anxiety because they're like, should I be training harder than a cis man because I'm not cis and I don't have the same genetics? Should I not train as hard as a cis man because I'm not cis and I need more recovery? I think that we just kind of go round and round in circles in terms of how hard should I be training, and then you kind of don't know. I'm feeling like shit, but should I just keep going? harder? I don't know. But before I do get into the nuanced subject of overtraining, my new training program, Mask Made Simple, is actually going to be linked down below. Also, if you are interested in one-on-one coaching, a meal plan, or a training plan, feel free to email me. It's going to be right here. So there are a few variables that we're looking to account for when it comes to overtraining. These are going to be a pretty good indicator on if you're digging yourself into the ground and really damaging your potential for gains. Little spoiler alert, probably if you feel like you're overtraining, I don't think that the answer is very rarely going to be to go harder. Just a heads up on that one, okay? So the number one variable that I account for when I'm overtraining is my ability to maintain my previous working weight. I track all of my lifts and I do suggest you guys track your lifts. Every single week when you train, ideally you would be building upon your last session. Say I'm doing a bench press, right? And I'm pretty much knocking 185 pounds out of the park consistent. That's damn near my warm up weight, right? During this particular week, I'm under 185 pounds and it feels like a ton of bricks. I simply cannot lift this weight up for the life of me. I'm like, oh, that's weird. So I just drop the weight. I go about my session. I'm like not bugging about it. I go to my pull day. I'm doing deadlifts. Typically 315 is like a literal warm up for me. I get under 315 and that shit does not budge. And I'm like, that's my, that's my warm up, bro. Like what's going on here? You find yourself loading up warm up weight and you simply cannot lift that shit. That is a pretty big freaking indicator that you might need a deload. What does a deload mean? Utilizing less weight for your training sessions. Okay. So the whole point of a deload is to kind of give your central nervous system a break. You have to remember that whenever we are training, if you train hard as fuck, you're putting your central nervous system kind of into that fight or flight sort of territory and you're fatiguing yourself every time you do so your adrenals are going. It's just a law, right? By taking a deload, you're essentially giving your central nervous system a second to breathe you're giving your body a chance to fully recover now the second variable that you want to account for is going to be your mental energy towards training whenever i have needed a deload i noticed that my energy and my excitement and my will to get to the gym just feels like shit i just feel like bro i don't want to go if you ever hear me say i don't want to go to the gym you need to do a double take like what bro are you good if you're a newbie and you're just getting started i don't ever suggest taking deloads out of the gym because you'll just end up leaving and never coming back to be honest but when i feel mentally out of it what i do to kind of make myself feel like don't fucking push it devin i'll listen to a podcast instead of like bring me the horizon or paramore or like some shit that really gets me fucking going i'll like listen to something that forces me to chill the hell out now the last metric that i look to account for when assessing for overtraining and something that takes a little bit more longitudinal awareness i guess is visual progress now a lot of us have this terrible terrible habit of starting up training and going super duper hard maybe you train three hours a day maybe you train seven days a week, six days a week, and you're just going hard as hell. You're pushing it as hard as you can, but you're just simply not seeing progress. What's going on? You're killing yourself. Nothing's happening. What's the meaning of this? Recovery is actually just as important as breaking yourself down to the very last compound, right? So if you're only getting one rest day, if you're getting no rest days at all, you're simply not giving your body the chance to recover. Your body needs food to replenish itself. Your body needs sleep. Please, please, please do not feel like because you're training 18 fucking hours, you're nonstop. You live in the gym. You fucking have a sleeping bag in the gym that that means you're going to see all the gains in the world. You're working harder. You're not working smarter. You're putting yourself at risk of injury, potentially ruining your relationship with the gym. It's not necessarily your fault because you just think hard, hard, hard. Like that's what social media pushes. Like just be a hard ass, just grit your teeth and get through it. When in reality, what actually makes you see the most progress is a balance of I'm going to train five times a week. I'm going to train four times a week. And those other days of the week, I'm going to maybe sleep in a little bit. Don't make the mistake of thinking that more equates to more gains because it's simply not the truth. Okay. If there's any other aspects that you have found, please drop that in the description down below. And by no means am I saying that these are the only three factors that indicate your overtraining. Those are just the biggest factors that I've come across within my work and for myself. If you do not follow me on Instagram, definitely do it because I have been treating Instagram like my little baby. It's going to be linked down below. That is where you get to see the visual of what I look like, like from the camera down because I be, the angles don't make, I'm, I look like I, like, I look like I work out on Instagram, but here I kind of don't. So and like I always say, Devin loves you, Devin's a Don, and Devin is out of here, boy. Ah.